to episode two of Our Adventures in Middle Earth. It's a good thing you remembered, because I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's only the second one. I know. <laughs> it's only the second one. Uh, big episode today. Yeah. Big episode. I know you've had a rough week. I know. It's, it's been hotter uh, than hell here in I Ontario this week. I eating dinner tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so uh, you, Garrett does heating and air conditioning, and, like, Everybody and their mother was calling in to get their air conditioners. Yeah, I honestly uh, think that like my company's the only one that works in the town where I. <laughs> just for the amount of calls we had. But. Yeah, yeah. So I had a rough week too this week. It was yeah. exhausting. It's like yeah. the exact opposite. This yeah, guy didn't work <laughs> at all, and I worked more than like three people together. Yeah, it was like, why are you so late to get here? <laughs> yeah, what's going on? Because they fell asleep eating at dinner. <laughs> Uh, anyway, so, okay, so today we're going to be talking about Middle Earth's Deadliest Heroes, which yep. we were at last weekend. Great event. Mm -hmm. uh, then we're going to talk about our next event that we have coming up in June, which is called Holes Are for Hobbits. And then we're going to do something new. I mean, it's only the second episode, so a lot of stuff is going to be new. <laughs> yeah. <but> <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a scenario spotlight. Yes, yeah, so we're going to talk um, about missions, right? We are, yep. The ones, the standard ones now that came in the General's pack. These neat little... Yeah, cards. Which, by the way, I heard they're reissuing, going to be reissuing the General's pack. Did you hear that? I hope so, because they sold out <laughs> and not everybody got it. Yeah, but I think it's not going to be exactly the same. So. Oh, limited edition. Big uh, money right here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, then we're going to do Flotsam and Jetsam. Yes. And we're going to do a top ten. Top ten. Yeah. But it's not like a normal top ten. No. Is there a normal kind of top ten? I don't know. Yeah. It's going to be the top ten reasons to come to an OSBGL event. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. Okay. Uh, yeah. So we'll get right into uh, the Deadliest Heroes. Ugh. So that was last Saturday. Heroes were deadly. And it was. And it was a thousand point event. All heroes. Uh, maximum of two factions. Which, which was, was tricky. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, well, it was actually really limited what you could do, I found. I had this great army of elf heroes. <laughs> yeah. Mixed with a whole bunch of... With Melbeth. And, yeah, with Melbeth yeah. and crazy <laughs> stuff. And then it was like, oh, you can only take two factions. Yeah. Well, I guess <laughs> I'm not taking that. But it was um, very close to what's going to be run at Nova. I believe three of the missions are being run at Nova. I think Nova's only doing three missions, and Derek had those three missions, and then they had uh, a modified contest of champions. Yeah, because it's Thursday afternoon, evening-ish, and we were going to try and get there, but we're driving down yeah. that day, so yeah. if we don't have to stop 500 times for someone to go to the washroom, we might be able to make it. <laughs> don't look at me. It's not me. No. <laughs> Um, so anyway, what did you take to uh, Deadliest Heroes? We know think, what you took. You talked yeah. about it last time. Yeah, and plus people have probably seen the yeah. pictures. Yeah. Um, yeah, I talked about it last time as well. I took uh, the Army of Nazgul. I don't remember what the name of the army is. Yeah, I don't either. Something. But anyways, it's the um, Necromancer and... All nine Nazgul. Yeah. And... The Keeper of the Dungeons. Keeper of the Dungeons. That was the one I gave you. Yeah. And you got to paint it up. I did. Good I was for you. surprised. Yeah, he's you, actually you, really... Yeah, you can give it back now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here you go. No, he's still still not uh, back up for sale. Oh, yeah? I've been... They better not have discontinued. I've been keeping my eye out for him, so hopefully he comes back. <laughs> yeah. And I took... Um, well, I had my army all picked out. Yeah. Right? I even had my models out on the tray. And I was taking the Witch King... Taking a uh, troll chieftain, uh, two. Uh, what are the Mordor cavalry called again? The Black Numenorean. Or... Yeah, Black Numenorean captains. Black Numenorean captains. Yeah. Yeah. Um, on uh, horse with lance and all that, and then I had. They're uh, good. Shagrat war leader. Anyway, a bunch of other stuff like that. Sheila. No Shelob, because I don't own it, so I would have had to borrow it from either you or Drew. So I didn't go with Shelob. But anyways. 
So I knew what you were taking, and then when Drew told me what he was taking, I'm just like, yeah, my army will get completely rolled by Drew's army. So forget this. <laughs> well, most people's armies got yeah. rolled by Drew's army. So, the, so the night before the tournament, I yeah. changed my army. Totally changed my Painted army. Painted up a whole model. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I ended up taking uh, almost all Lothlorien. Only... The only model that I took that wasn't was Gildor from uh, yeah. Piles. But everything had, well, almost everything had an Elven Blade. A lot of them did, yeah. yeah. So I took, um, uh, who did I take now? I took Galadriel, I took Celeborn. Is it Celeborn or Celeborn? I never know. Mm. Anyway, him. Um, one's American, one's Canadian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rumil, um who else did I take? I took two cap Gladrum captains with shield, three wood elf captains with bow, and they come with a uh, uh, elven blade. And I put bought an elven blade for the captains. Legolas. Um, Legolas. Yeah. So he doesn't have elven blade. I think that was pretty much it. Yeah, you didn't have a storm collar like you said you were gonna bring. No, I was gonna bring a storm collar and something else, and then it would have been two models I would have had to paint the night before. Mm -hmm. So I switched. I made a couple of adjustments and put Gladriel in there instead. Yeah. So that was my army, which was really a fun army to play. I enjoyed it. Sure it was. It was. It was a great army. Plus, to play. I figured if I did have to play you, <laughs> it would be a good counter for your army. Oh, and it's like all the Elven Blades in the world, <laughs> plus Fight 5, yeah, or no, Fight, fight 6, because yeah. all your captains. Everyone in my army had Fight 6. Yeah, or higher. No, they were all Fight 6. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I guess. Pretty sure they Yeah, were. yeah, they were. And lo and behold, what happens? We we're played, we we were played five, each other first We game. were five minutes late, yeah. of course, the yeah. three of us, because uh, Drew came with us. And, uh, yeah, so we got drawn against each other because they had just finished picking the pairings. Is that why we got put together? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dang. So we, we played each other in Lords of Battle. Yeah. First game, <clears throat> which I have some pictures to show. Yeah. Yeah. So it was a fun game, though, eh? I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. The whole time, it was like... I can't remember how many. You rolled 42 or something sixes? Yeah, you rolled 42 sixes and 41 ones. Yeah. Because we were keeping track of it because it was one of the things of this uh, they have a, tournament. They offer a little prize for the most number of sixes rolled through the tournament and another one for the most number of ones rolled through the tournament. Yeah. Which means you have to keep track of it every game. So mm -hmm. it, it, it can be a little time consuming and a little tedious to do, but it is kind of fun. It's the <laughs> first time that I've actually really tried to do it. It's you know, I did too. And I actually got a sheet out and yeah, I marked it. I think the only reason we did it was because we played each other in the first game. Yeah. So we were patient with each other with that. So yeah. It and then like, I just mark it down. Uh, yeah, I mark carried it down on. I, got I actually thought uh, mark that, down I got by one. the end of the tournament, I thought surely I'm going to win either one of these because yeah. I'm one of the only people that's keeping track. But nope, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, how did our game go? It was you rolling sixes at the most inconvenient times <laughs> and frustrating the heck out of me. Yeah. Well, we, we said early on that, like, I have to do well in the early part of the game mm -hmm. because if I don't, you'll wear me out. Like, once all yeah. my might is gone, I'll start losing people and my fate. And that's kind of what happened. I did well at the beginning. Yeah. But really, against your army, doing well at the beginning, all it does is cost you might. It doesn't actually cost you any models. No. It right. caused me wounds. Yeah. Like, it was probably the worst mission for me to play you. Probably. Because yeah. my guys are just, like, feeding you a victory point. Yeah. Well, then you did well because it ended up as a tie. Yeah, we so. actually tied exactly. Yeah. Neither leader was wounded. No. Nope. Neither of us was broken. And nope. we both did 14 wounds. Yeah. But like you say, yeah. early on, you were winning because yeah. you're like, well, I rolled a 5 and you rolled a 6. Yeah. I'll spend a mic to win. Yeah. Like... You and you feel it. you feel good because you're like you're taking you know in, in one turn in the very first turn of combat I think you lost like five guys yeah half my line across across the, across the middle. it was just little markers and I'm like yeah <laughs> and then the next turn is like boop 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 and it's like, yeah. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I think the first guy I rolled for though I rolled like a one you did for, have yeah you for did his have resurrection to spend, and it was might. I got to spend both his might on the first roll of the game <laughs> this isn't going well. <laughs> 
But uh, yeah, I did. I wore you down. Um, like wore down the might, and then yeah. like at the end is where I made up all my points. Yeah. Like I think it was the last round of combat where I killed, I killed Legolas, and I killed the Gladrum captain. We timed out. Like we didn't finish yeah. the game, so it would have been interesting to play that out and see how it would have mm -hmm. gone. Because I never actually really did get to the Necromancer. No, and it was I was casting spells. I think I still had seventeen will left. He still had quite a bit. Yeah. I did throw him into combat to try and get. Uh, the tickle fingers, <laughs> yeah. trying to tickle some people to death. <laughs> Never happened. That game. I did like the fact that like I had three guys in my army that could cast immobilize. That was that was rough. Yeah. So two of them like well, Celeborn has three will, and then um, Gildor has four will, and then plus Galadriel. So, but it it really helped mm -hmm. in all of the games. Well, then you also have Thranduil. I think you forgot to mention him. Oh, I did, yeah. Thranduil. Yeah. Thranduil with his automatic cast... Magic hat. Yeah, his magic hat. So yeah. it, everything within six inches causes terror. Yeah. yeah. So it's awesome. Like pretty and much every model on the board was causing terror yeah. at one point. <laughs> and then yeah. uh, Celeborn casts Aura of Command, and everybody within six inches automatically passes. And yeah. I was like, oh, there goes my one chance of him maybe... Really that was a lines. really good combo to have. It was. And, like, again, in all of the games, that was... Well, it's all cool. heroes, yeah. right? So... In any, like, melee, mass melee game, that combo was really good. Because mm -hmm. it can limit them, yeah. but it makes sure you get in there. Yeah. But yeah, it was... Well, we started, like, I don't know, maybe a yeah. foot away from each other. You got a couple rounds of shooting, and yeah. then... We, and it's we, funny, eh? Because, like, you and I play each other a lot at the tournaments. Yeah. And it's more times than not, it's the first game. Mm -hmm. Right? So, add another one to the list. But that was our fault, because we were running a bit late. Yeah. So, uh, what about game two? Game two, seize the prize. Kind of an uncommon mission in, uh, in our circuit, really. Now, I guess it's going to be more common, because it's part of the standard pack. Yeah. And now they've kind of fixed the mission where you have to run off the other side of the board with the prize. Yeah, I actually like it. It's it's not a bad mission, yeah. Who did you who did you play in that? Like Lewis. Lewis? And the prize was on like a three tiered hill with um uh runes on the top. Mm hmm So it was a very Said so you climb your way up there? Yeah, it was very difficult. His trolls like his troll captains, he had two troll captains in his list. Mm -hmm. Um Actually, it's surprising. His uh, why don't you go over what his list was? Yeah, it was uh, hit Sauron with the ring. <laughs> yeah, um, which was like okay. That's going to be tough not to crack. Yeah. Spoiler: I didn't even do anything to him. <laughs> I tried. It was like the last combat. I'm like, go for that one little poke yeah. of a wound to get a victory yeah. point. Didn't happen. No. Uh, two troll chieftains, um, Shagrat war leader. With a shield of knocking things down on the charge. Yep. Uh, a taskmaster, mm -hmm. which was, uh, I think it gave him a couple free might points. Um, and a shade, I think. Yeah, yeah, he had the shade too, yeah. Oh, I hate shades. Yeah, I played him later, so I remember. Sh a shade mixed with stuff that has really high fight sucks the fight against. It does. Because you're like, well, I could strike up with heroic strike. And get higher than your fight, but if I don't roll a six and you roll a six, mm -hmm. so what happened in your game anyway? So did you get to it first or no, you got to it? No, he first? got up there with trolls. <laughs> okay, so my guys are trying to climb up this hill. Yeah. And I don't know. I must have rolled like four ones with the. Uh, I forget what his name is. It's the dude with the spear. It's supposed to be the betrayer. I can't remember. His name eludes mm -hmm. me at this point. But uh, he must have fallen down four times trying to climb up this thing. <laughs> and the lingering shadow's like, what are you guys doing? What's taking you so long? Because he gets this free little three-inch yeah. move. Uh, at like, the, yeah, he was up top there so fast. And Lewis yeah. was like, oh man, i got to get here before you did. And we actually got there pretty much right at the same time just because he was marching with uh, yeah. the Taskmaster to get his guys up faster. Uh, he ended up digging up the, the relic. I think it was the second the second try, mm -hmm. and then it was full on two, two Mordor Troll Chieftains on the top there versus like six in my Nazgul, and it was like back and forth, and I'd win, but I couldn't do anything to him, and uh, one time he won, and he, I think he threw the Lingering Shadow, 
and he was like one inch off of throwing me off of the the cliff. Like I landed right on the edge, so yeah. I was like, whew, <laughs> died because <laughs> of the yeah, throw. Yeah. So his little token is there, and then I just teleport right back to where. So did he actually kill any of your guys? No, no, no. And I don't think you killed permanently no. any of my guys either. Um, yeah, so I actually killed both. No, not both. The, the troll chieftain with the objective, mm -hmm. casting chill soul. It was just like chill soul. Mm -hmm. Next turn, chill soul. Chill soul. Yeah. Dead. Yeah. And then grab the objective with one of my abyssal knights. Mm -hmm. While I had my other you one. Did. I had my other one going long down the field. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't that big of a difference, but I still the next turn is like okay. Well, I'll just use their rule and teleport beside them. <laughs> yeah. I got, I don't know, it was like maybe five so or six the, inches. So the rule for the Abyssal Knights is that, uh, I guess, is it in the movement phase? or No, it's after priority is determined, because um, that's like when everything happens in that list. So after priority, you can move one of them to beside the other one. Yeah, so even if they're like entirely across the table. Yeah, it could be like the entire <laughs> yeah. diagonal width of the So field. did you like set it up? Like did you already no. start running away with the other guy hoping that the other Abyssal Knight would get it and then you would be like, boop, I'm out of here. No, Lewis was heading back with his guy, I think to try and regroup and I was swinging my guys around it just so happened that one of them was the guy. Okay. Um, and then I just collected the objective and it was literally like, I don't know, the distance between me being on the hill and not on the hill. Yeah. So one guy was not on the hill, and the guy that got the objective was on the hill. So, but I ended up. It was enough to get you. Yeah. Getting off the table, out of and he way. he almost killed yeah. the guy, the the turn before I ran off the field. Yeah. With Sauron casting a chill soul, he he got it to work on a four plus, and yeah. I was like, yeah. okay, I haven't spent my one will that this guy has. I'll try and resist. And I rolled a three. Mm-hmm. Like. Got a might left. Spend it. <laughs> yeah. Why Next not? turn, run off the table. Yeah. Right on. Yeah, I actually. Right uh, so you won. I, I guess. did. I did. I think yeah. it was like ten to zero or something. Yeah. Because didn't kill leader, um, didn't break, and. Yeah, in that one, if you end up with the objective, yeah. Seven it's, points if you get yeah. it off the table, wow. and I broke him on the last turn. <laughs> I killed the shade. Yeah. With a slayer of men, mm -hmm. rolling double sixes to wound. In the combat phase, I'd wounded him earlier in the game, but I just like right, good. wound good. up with that big baseball bat and clink. <laughs> Everybody swung, loves it. When swung the for the get killed. swung for the field <laughs> or for the the fence and and got it. So uh, I played a guy that I've never played before. Okay. Um, I think he's been to a few tournaments, not a lot. His name's Scott Cameron. I played him. Yeah, at, really uh, nice guy. Skycon. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. He's playing yeah, was that that was in Kitchener as well, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay. Because it's like he when we were leaving the hall at the end of the day, it's like he's like getting on all of his stuff and it's like he's it's all like bike riding gear, like, you know, racing kind of gear and well, his pedal, and everything. Bike. And he had, yeah, and he had his bike there. And it's like he rode his bike all the way there from Guelph. It was like a forty five minute bike ride or something like that. That's and it's like, oh my god. Yeah. Right on. That that was that's impressive. Yeah, but he had um, his army was Gandalf on cart, which I don't think I've ever played against before. I haven't. Yeah, um, Saruman the White, mm -hmm. Radagast on horse, uh, Elrond, Glorfindel on horse, and Gladriel, Lady of Light. So like all the big hitters. Big White Council. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and it was of course it seized the prize. So that game was just, you know, it was on a little hill, and we just like, and we were on the hill for the entire thing. The yeah. only one that wasn't on the hill was Gandalf on cart, was like circling around. Just doing drive Yeah, like, they, you know, they were, both him and, and Saruman were firing off, like, in the, in the first couple of turns, they were firing off Sorcerer's Blast and, like, knocking all my guys down. Firing off fireworks from his oh, cart. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it was crazy. So like that one with with my two overlapping auras, one from Thranduil and one from uh, Celeborn, it was really good, but really hard to keep track of it all. Yeah. Yeah. It's and, like, oh wait, uh, you gotta make a terror test. Oh, well, you yeah. gotta make a terror test. No, I don't. Yeah. And uh, again, there in that fight, having the immobilizes. If I didn't have them, I would have been dead. Yeah. For sure, because like those big elf heroes would have just 
Ginsu and I, my guys, oh, one yeah. after another. And as it was, like, I think I lost two of my captains quite early, and I'm like, oh my god, he's just going to be knocking my guys off one at a time here. And it was, it was rough, but, like, I ended up, um, you know, I picked on one guy at a time, kind of, to try to get them off their horses first and, and then start trying to kill guys. Yeah. And I can't even, I did kill a few of them, and I can't even remember who. I know Gandalf was his leader, and I didn't kill him, but I did manage to wound him. And I think I took the cart down. Um, yeah, anyways, we, I, I got to the objective and tried to dig it up and failed. And then we were just in a melee for like three or four turns. And then finally I had another free guy and I tested to dig it up and I dug it up and it ended up that I passed it off to like one of my wood elf captains and he sort of ran and he yeah. got two turns of running and managed to just get on the opponent's side of the board as the game ended. Oh, okay. And so neither of us I don't think was broken. I wounded his leader and I had the prize on his side so I think it was 6 nothing, mm -hmm. if I'm right. So really fun game. Really fun opponent to play yeah, too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, nice guy. Yeah. The army was... Uh... Yeah, it's that, that, yeah that's, a, <clears throat> that's the kind of army that you want to see in an event like that, too, because yeah. it was just like every wizard goal <laughs> was there, so it was fun. In mm -hmm. game three, which we played Heirlooms, which yeah. is my favorite of all of the missions. I'm joking, I hate there, missions. There's like a sarcasm <laughs> like blinking yeah. above Dawn. <laughs> yeah, and I played Lewis there, who you had just played. Oh, okay. So it was the same army with Sauron. And like quite frankly, it was a lucky draw for me to get that mission. Yeah. Because the Maelstrom, it really screwed him over. Um, which often happens in, in that. Um, my army mainly came on on one side, and I had a few guys like Legolas and a couple of captains were on you know, different sides. Yeah. But I had the bulk on one side, and uh, he he wasn't interested in spending any might to alter rolls, it seemed like. And he rolled, uh, you know, a two or whatever, or a three for the shade, and so I brought it on, like, right in the middle of all my guys, and I killed him, like, on the first turn. Yeah, because that's, right. uh, that's how you deal with well, shade. Well, I guess the second turn. You just get rid of it. Yeah, so so I was lucky there to charge, and with all my guys, the terror was no issue. Just charged in and yeah. trapped it with like four big guys and and killed them. And you know, it it ended up that I was I took out one of his troll chiefs with shooting. Just I just his same thing happened actually with his taskmaster first. He actually brought the taskmaster on between Legolas and a captain. And Legolas went one on one with the Taskmaster, I believe. I don't think the other guy got there, but he killed the Taskmaster. And I, you know, I had a fair amount of shooting in my list. And while I was trying to get into position, I was firing three or four elves at at his uh, one of his troll chiefs. And just having like shooting with might backing it up, you can do damage. Oh yeah. Right. It's like oh, I roll a five. Yeah, and, and so six. so I eventually brought down one of the troll chiefs just oh, with okay. shooting like pling pling might point pling pling might point. Yeah. And down one goes. So um, you know, we we started checking objectives. The second one that got checked, he checked it with Shagrat War Leader. Boom, he found it right away on wow. the other side of the table from where I was, and I'm like, oh, here we go, <laughs> right. <laughs> So then everybody was, uh, you Scrambling know. Scrambling for yeah. that spot. Yeah. I was hustling to get across the board um, so that I could run right into the face of Sauron, yeah. which was awesome. Um, but again, it's like the immobilizes. Mm -hmm. It was just relentlessly immobilizing, immobilizing. And I, I actually was fighting with Sauron. And yeah, it's, like he's not resistant to no, magic. Yeah, so, you know, and... Basically, what happened was I was I was fighting with Sar, and I knew I would probably lose a couple of guys to him, and that you know my the rest of my army just ran right past him. Yeah. And um, on kind of the last part of the game, you know, he was trying to run Shagrat War Leader, who had the thing like around a building, and I came around the other side with Gladriel, and I commanded him to run the other way, right into the middle of my guys who <laughs> surrounded them <laughs> and killed them. Sneaky. Yeah. Um, so that was fun game as well. That was that was a good one. So I twenty five percented him because he he had to get. I think he had to go down to one model or 
Yeah, it's something, like something that. weird when he was six. Yeah, um, and I think Sauron was the only thing he had left, so the game ended um, ended there, and, and I ended up winning. I forget what the points were exactly. But. Yeah, I played the Brendel. Mm-hmm. Um, That's Derek's son. Yeah. Younger son, Ronan's brother. He's playing Easterlings. Yep. Um, I didn't actually even see his army. It was it was different. It was actually yeah. really good. How and old is Brendel, first of all? Is I he don't know. like ten, he's, maybe he's eleven? 10, something, something like that. He's young. Yeah. But um Youngest player there by far. Yeah. Oh I think it's the youngest player we've had at an yeah. event. Um but he's he's he knows his stuff. He does. Uh he doesn't completely know everything, but he's still learning. Mm -hmm. Um I think if he had a mastery of that list, he probably would have absolutely crushed me. Well, that army is his army. Yeah, yeah. but that, like, the list he took was, his leader was Kamal and Felwis. Mm -hmm. um, I think he had, I forget what the guy's name is. It's like Anderal or something. One like of the, the Easterling heroes. Easterling named hero, like the leader of all the Easterlings on, a, on an armored horse. Um, a war priest on horse, and then seven dragon knights on horse. Okay. Do they have lances? No. No? Okay. They have three attacks each, mm -hmm. like, before you take into account the horse. Okay. Two might, no will, no fate, two wounds. Mm -hmm. But every time they kill somebody, or I think it's another hero, they get a might point back. Okay. That's so. Good. And my guys are one wound, no fate guys. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's like, charge in, I'll use the mic, kill a guy, get it back. And I'm like, hmm, I see how this game's going to go. Okay. But it didn't go that way. I got lucky. <clears throat> what um, was the terrain you were playing on? Uh, like, did it suit it cavalry? Was that, or? It was that, like, mouse pad stuff, but it was the 2D version. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so, like, there's a rock patches and a river. Yeah. There was some 3D stuff. Um... I ended up coming on like all over the place because of the maelstrom, but it was okay because of the way the objectives were set up. Um, I, I had sneakily set up one of my abyssal knights on a far side of the table, mm -hmm. like opposite of each other, and moved him up to beside an objective, and I was going to wait and reveal that as the last one if it came up, mm -hmm. wait for him to come over to me, mm -hmm. and then be like, Peace out and teleport across the board yeah. to his buddy. <laughs> that ability is actually really good for that kind of thing. It is. Because you can send your army like down field yeah. and send one of them over to check something and then it's not it. Boom. You can, right back. Yeah. Because yeah, right. you could that's so another it, way to do it. It too. adds yeah. a lot of mobility. Or if just you for that. have like a flank that's really weak, but one of them's there, you can bring him over to help. Mm -hmm. It's as an instant teleport, it's very cool. Mm -hmm. Um it didn't end up happening. He ended up finding it. Um, one of the last three was in the middle, and he ran a guy in and checked it, and it was mm -hmm. it was that one. So I didn't get to do my my cheeky little sneak <laughs> play. Um, yeah. yeah, it was a I don't know. It was just fight, 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 and his guys have two wounds and no fate um, and no will. So I was just sniping out their horses with the chill soul mm -hmm. on the necromancer because I'm like. There's no way you're getting eight dice to kill my guys. Well, yeah. The horse just amplifies the damage so Well, and their so speed hard. to get, like, to yeah. my guys, right? Yeah. So I ended up taking out the horses on a lot of the guys. And, yeah. um, that that actually explains why he rolled so many sixes in the yeah. tournament. Oh, yeah. Like a ridiculous <laughs> amount. Yeah. Like, I think in our game you rolled, like, close to seven. Well, I, I overheard him saying in the last game you rolled over a hundred sixes. Yeah. Well, if you have seven guys that are mounted and having four attacks each, eight attacks on the when you win. To wound, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No wonder. And I think in the end it was like the last turn, he had all his guys in one little area. Well, what guys that were left, I think you have three of the Dragonites and Smog, not Smog, mm -hmm. uh, Gollum. And I killed a couple of them and killed the guy with the objective. And then the next turn... Um, I claimed the objective and killed another guy, which brought him below the the twenty five percent threshold, or time right. was called at that time, something like that, and uh, ended up winning. Um, with that, uh, I had killed his leader and I had broken him, so that's a full 
full enchilada? No, it didn't because there's a banner. Oh, okay. There's two points for the banner, so I got ten again. But it was it was a good game. Like it. So at this point, you're two wins and a draw. Yeah. And so was I. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the funny oh. thing was the <laughs> second <laughs> game. We're like, okay, who's we playing drew who? In the first game. Yeah, and then it's like Don and Garrett. It's like we already played each other in the first game. <laughs> yeah, the only <laughs> other game that there's been that yeah. we played each other. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like you guys, only, you're the only ones that tied. That's why the software picked you. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're going to have to change it. <laughs> so, uh, going into the last game, you and I were both on two wins and a draw. So, we had a good chance. I, I mean, somebody was going to go 4-0 oh, and win. But you and I had both had a good chance to come in second. Yeah. Didn't happen. No. No. That was... I, I think I got the, the... The the opponent I played is a great person and a really good guy. The army that he was playing was not beneficial because he was playing like I'm like why Julian. is not why is everybody not using Azog like yeah. Azog is the one guy you'd think would be at this tournament because the guy destroys other heroes. Yeah. Well, I played the one person with Azog. Yeah, Julian is his name, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And through the process of picking champions, I conveniently also gave him an extra might, will, and fate. Oh yeah. On both of his heroes. Yeah, because the way the mission worked to the. Um, you had to pick two champions to fight in the middle against an enemy two champions. Well, it was complicated. And nobody yeah. else could affect the combat until one guy in that fight died. And then once one then person had died, it was a free-for-all. But victory points were issued for champions wounding opponent's champions, and they could only be awarded if the champions did the wounds. Yeah. So if you had your army come in and massacre the other guys, you wouldn't get victory points. No. So, but the way it worked was like, you picked one of his, and he picked one of yours, and then you picked one of yours, and he picked one of his. Mm -hmm. So, like, when I played that mission, the guy that I played, uh, who was Steve Stokes, had a really good army. He right away picked Galadriel to be in the middle, and I'm like, oh, great. She's <laughs> the like, unarmed. Yeah, she's like, one, 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 one attack and unarmed. Fantastic. Defense three. Yeah. Right? Oh, reroll fate. Yeah, big deal. Yeah. Right? I have defense three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but anyway, okay, so you played Julian, and he had, who else did he have? Azog and. He had Azog on White Warg, Bog on Warg, uh, the Goblin King, uh, oh. and then he had. A couple, I think it was two or three hunter orc captains on Felwarg, and then five or six hunter orc captains on yeah. foot. So All basically, of weapons. so he had, uh, so he had a whole hunter orc army, and then it's like, ah, well, I may as well bring in the goblin king. Why not? Why yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, yeah, it, it's the army that he he has. Yeah. Um, he's got it's a good Azog's army. hunters, and then the Goblin King with Goblin Town. Yeah. And it's I guess it's meant to be like the thematic part of the movie where the dwarves run out of. Right. Um, yeah. Moria, right? No, no. No, it's the. The Goblin Town. Yeah, Goblin Town. Yeah. yeah. So, but yeah, I, uh, I did not do very good. So who was the champions? Uh, it was Azog on White Warg. And a hunter or captain on Thalwarg mm -hmm. versus my keeper of the dungeons, the greatest mm -hmm. guy ever. Not. Not? No. He's not good against other heroes. Yeah. Um, and the necromancer. And I picked the necromancer, and it was probably my biggest mistake. Oh, yeah. Uh, I should have chosen. Well, because he's going to be in combat with you every turn. Yeah. yeah. I should have chosen something else, like one of my, one of my Nazgul, probably mm -hmm. the Witch King, uh, maybe Kamal. Um, just for the extra tax, and then I would have been less points, and I could have probably put in another one or two other Nazgul as part of my package because yeah. of the way the tournament rules. You could either give them extra might, will, and fate depending on the point difference, or you could add extra heroes to make up the point difference. So I could have had like four or five guys against his two, mm -hmm. but Azog is just ridiculous. Yeah. Well, because you were still bringing your guys back on a 2+, plus, right? Yeah. The, I think it was like the third or fourth round of combat. I had 16 fate left. Or sorry, 16 will. And I was, okay, we're going to go in this combat. Neither of our heroes have died. Let's mm -hmm. see what happens. He rolled like three wounds or something. 
And then I was like, okay, i got to stop through these. So I started rolling feet. And I rolled seven ones in a row. <laughs> and once the dust had settled, I had started that fight with 16 will, and I ended with two. What? Yeah. To stop three wounds, oh I had spent God. 14 will. That's rough. And, yeah, that's how the game went. Yeah. The other... Um, so did he kill the necromancer He did, yeah, yeah. yeah. He did. The um, I, I managed to, like, cr crawl my way back with the, the Nazgul. And it was scary, because every time one of them died, it was on a 3+, plus, and I'm like, ugh. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it was, it was rough. Yeah. I, that was the only game, though, that I actually lost a Nazgul permanent death. So did he get the full six points for the champion he did. fight? He did, yeah. Yeah. When well, you get when that happens, he killed both of my like, heroes, so that's six. Yeah. Um, and then I was I was hoping to break him, because mm -hmm. um, he just had hunter or captains, and there are like two wounds, defense four. Yeah. Uh, one fate, and I managed to kill a bunch of them. Um, I think I broke him, or I got close to breaking him, um, but I never wounded his leader, who was Azov. So. Right. It was. So it was a loss. Once the Necromancer lost 14 will in one go, it was... So you had two wins, a draw, and a loss. Yeah. yeah. But I honestly believe that if I'd have played anybody but Azog in that, yeah. last, that last game, I would have done a lot better. Yeah. So. So I played Steve Stokes, who yeah. I'd never played before. He's been to a bunch of events now. Mm -hmm. A mature man, much like myself. And, uh, Is that a polite way of saying older person? Exactly. <laughs> uh, but he has all his hair. Your, your, like, you your know, experience unlikely. levels are, are yeah. up there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and he had Radagast on Eagle, Guahir, Bjorn, Dane on Pig, and three Iron Hills captains on Goat. Wow. So much smaller army than mine, but a lot of big nasties. So Radagast there. Alliance and Iron Hills. Yeah. Cool. Um, so, of course, I picked one of his Iron Hills captains yep. to Typical. be a champion, and he picked Gladriel, and I'm like, oh, <laughs> brutal. And it was. Oh, it was hard. Well, she's like 120 points, too. 100, uh, or 130, I forget. But, yeah, yeah she's not cheap. No, yeah. she's not cheap, and she's terrible in yeah, fighting. Yeah, in fighting, yeah. So then uh, he picked Radagast on Eagle, to be in the fight for okay. him, which was a good choice because yeah. it's a monster. And I'm like, hmm, okay, I'll pick Celeborn. And after I thought, you know what, I probably would have been... Because what ended up happening is he killed both my guys yeah. in the middle. Killed Gladriel fairly early and Celeborn hung on until like the last turn of the game and then died. But nevertheless, he killed both of them and got the full six points. And because of the nature of my army and his army, he was going to be charging me with all this big stuff, and I wanted to get shooting in before he came back. I had all my stuff back. If I had been surrounding the combat, I may have actually picked up points at the end, because okay. there was a point for controlling the center objective. Oh, that's what it was. That's what my, my yeah. second objective was. I had a lot of my guys, but he ended yeah. up killing. Like, I think at the end of the game... I had like two Nazgul standing and yeah. lost them were objectives. So I thought at the end, I thought, you know what, for, you know, Celeborn did okay, but like he couldn't put out any offense really. Yeah. Right. Um, Rumil would have probably done just as well because of his special rule. Oh, which he's, is he's like, like designed yeah, to like be Yeah, like any sixes you roll, re-roll. Yeah. Right? The only thing is he only got two attacks, so it's like, yeah. Shield? Yeah, shield. Um, but then you're relying on Galadriel's on arm to do the damage? Well, the only thing you're waiting for is basically you're hoping, uh, the hope would have been, okay, Galadriel's going to die fine. Yeah. And then as soon as she does, my other people can influence the fight now. Yeah. Right? And Ramil could have just stood there shielded all day long, hoping to, to just stay in combat. So you'd go for the secondary objectives. Yeah, and maybe I could take his heroes down with the rest of my army and get the secondary objectives. Because yeah. the battle outside the center went well for me. Okay. Right? Um, like, he came, he brought Gwahir around around the back and eventually brought him in into combat. Um, and, you know, he, he hung back a little bit with his uh, other dwarves. 
uh, on goat and I was able to kill one of them with shooting so I got one of his captains but he brought you know he brought in like Dane on pig a captain Bjorn and go and tried to do it all at once right fortunately my immobilizes helped me out and on the first turn I was able to surround Gwahir and kill him. Poor oh, Gwahir. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's like that model needs help. <laughs> um, um, but then it was like, you know, I was fighting I was fighting uh, Dane and I was fighting a captain and I was fighting Bjorn. Uh, and I lost a couple of guys I think. But, you know, if the game had gone on one more turn I'm pretty sure I would have killed Dane. I'd taken out his pig and he had no might left and I think he had a wound on him. So just having so many models was helpful but even in that game like he gassed out all my might just mm -hmm. because I was having to call heroic combats like every turn right yeah. um, just to make sure that I got my positioning and everything right mm -hmm. um, so anyway like the game kind of timed out yeah it timed out uh, and the last turn he killed Celeborn in the middle picked up the six points there and I don't know if I got a point. I think I think Radagast might have been his leader, I forget. Anyway, he smashed me in that one. Mm -hmm. So I lost that too and also finished two wins, one draw. Yeah. One loss. But it was a really good game. First time I've played him and I, we really had a fun game. Well, they had a bunch of prizes for different things. Yep. Lots of prizes. They did, yeah. They didn't give out like actual prizes for winning them, you got more tickets towards yeah. the raffle. Derek's kind, of like. Derek's kind of the champion of the whole raffle system, yeah. I think, or one of them in our group. And that is, instead of giving the winners, like first, second, and third, who traditionally tend to be not always the same people, but... Close. Yeah, like there's some variety, but like a lot of the same people do tend to um, place and they end up taking home all the prizes if that's all you're giving prizes for. So what we've ended up doing now is uh, a lot of tournaments run with a raffle system and everybody gets raffle tickets and then you get additional raffle tickets for placing and, and that. And sometimes you'll get a small prize for a thing. So. Well, like first, second, and third yeah. got to pick between either Aragorn's ring yeah. or the one ring. So, like, that's what he had given out as a prize at SkyCon, which mm -hmm. was, uh, I forget the name of it, but it was, like, the third one he's run. He, yeah, he gave out the three elven rings at SkyCon, yeah. and this one here, he had those rings, yeah. Um, but Derek won for both, two things. He won for the best display board. Yep. And also for best conversion for, uh... He did a uh, pretty different conversion of Radagast on yeah. wakeboard being pulled by like dolphins. Instead of rabbits, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he had them in water and stuff. It's pretty yeah. cool. Yeah. It's different. Yeah, so I guess, I'm not, I guess he probably just got more raffle tickets for that. I'm not sure if it actually won prizes. Uh, or... Yeah. It's Steve Stokes also got an honorable mention for the display board because of his, uh, yeah. they had a really nice display board. Yeah, I have pictures of them, so oh, okay. I'll show it. Yeah. Well, his was his was nice, yeah. And then Lewis, uh, both of his Mortar Troll Chieftains mm -hmm. were heavily converted. Yeah. And they were really cool. Like, he had different helmets on them and weapons. Yeah, they were. Like, one guy was, like, a brawler, and he had two, like, shields on his arms, but with oh, spikes. Yeah. So he looked like he'd just punch you with a shield and... Oh, yeah. And knock you out type of thing. Nice. But, uh, his best uh, painted. So, Aaliyah, she won best painted for Smog. Yep. Which was an amazing looking model. I was talking to her about it. And she was saying, uh, I think this is the second tournament she's been to, and both of them she's won best army or best painted. Yeah, she won for, for Rohan. Rohan last year. Yeah. That was last year, right? Was, yeah, yeah, last year. It was Niagara uh, Falls, it was. Yeah, I think, did Taylor put on the event? I think it was, yeah. 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 Um, but she was telling me how rough it was. Nobody's ever talked about that before, but, like, Smog actually, is. she said, was a horrible model to put together. She posted, uh, like, a, a blog about it. Yeah. And, and putting it all together and painting it. Yeah. And it was pretty neat. Like, there's there's a lot of gaps. I and, haven't looked at it yet. But and the, the resin had to be manipulated for, like, the oh, spines yeah. on the back. Because yeah. it was straight and 
In the model, it's curved. Right. Right. Yeah, I, that makes me never want to buy smog. <laughs> well, the cost is the first one, but because of the ability to put it together, and I would, I'd, I, I'd be I afraid would, to paint yeah, that I would model never, too. I would never be able to do justice to that model with no. my, my lack of painting ability. Yeah. And I think she had four uh, converted um, Nazgul, ring, ring right? race or, as Nazgul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Converted, and the like. I have cool buttons. Yeah. For mine. Yeah, she actually made this like little tokens. bases with skulls on them, and yeah. I was like, "Cool idea." Hmm. Yeah. So uh, it was a base with like do you know gravel these... and whatever, yeah. and then there's like a skull in the center of it. Yeah, I wanted to get yeah. rid of my stuff and use something like yeah, that. Yeah, they were neat. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was pretty cool. And then they had uh, they had an award. Yeah. For the most cheesy unthematic army there. And guess, guess never, who won never that guess one. who won that one. Yeah. Captain Cheesy McCheese Pants himself. <laughs> yeah, our buddy Andrew Brock. Yeah. The yeah. monster that he is. Yeah. He deserves to play Mortar. Yeah, so I have a picture of his army pure, as well. Pure evil, that guy. We both agreed after seeing his list that he was gonna win. Yeah. It was no, so no contest. His list, and I, I'm going by memory here. Uh, actually, let me see if I No, have, I know what exactly what it is. Off you do? Heart. I'll yep. see if I can just quickly pull up the picture. I know I have it right here someplace. Uh, go ahead if you know, though. Uh, well, the main component was a shade. Yeah. And the Witch King was his general, though. Yes, the Witch King. This is his here. On horse with yeah. crown and Morgul blade. Yeah. Yeah, the shade. He had two unnamed ring wraiths on fell beasts. Low will. Like I forget what they're. Eight will or something like that. They're designed to fly in and kill stuff in one go. Yeah. Uh, Shelob, which is a very broken model, decent model to bring to this, and then like ten. Nine, actually. Was it nine? Nine, yeah. Oh, I didn't I think it was. Oh no, oh, it, it was, was ten. ten. It, it was ten. ten. Yeah. Uh, Castellans, Castellans of Dolguldur. I think eight of them had uh, Morgul blades, or seven of them. Yeah. But yeah, so, it was definitely worthy of the cheesiest. It was. And I pointed out too, I realized this after when I was just writing my notes down here. It's the second tournament in a row that we've had where the cheesiest army holder yeah. also won the tournament. <laughs> because in the previous one, it was Ronan. Yeah. He won the tournament and also got voted for the cheesiest See, army. I forget what he had. It was the Necromancer. I played him, for goodness sakes. I should remember. He had the Necromancer, Giant Spiders, and then a whole bunch of uh, Urukai stuff. Yeah. So stuff that doesn't necessarily go together. No. But it's uh, it's these win like these guys that want to win. Yeah. Cherry picking all the good... Uh, it is. It is. And it's within the comp restrictions of the tournament, so... It's like, I'll take this really good thing from this list and mm -hmm. this really good thing from this list. There was a bit of a, like you say, because you can only take from two factions. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have taken something The thing ridiculous. is, though, when you're playing Mordor, you don't care about that rule. No. Because it's so, <laughs> it's such a big yeah. army list that, It's you like, know. Mordor is 90% of evil. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, they had a wooden spoon award there. They did. And uh, Tyler took home the wooden spoon. Uh, Do you know what enemy he was playing? No. I think it was some kind of... Was it some kind of uh, White Council? Probably. There's a lot of people there on were, White Council. Yeah. And I was very afraid to fight them. But conveniently, I tied my first game. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see if I can find a picture of uh, okay. Tyler's army. And then the last prize they the most had thematic. was the fluffiest, most thematic army. This is the best prize out of any prize at a tournament. Yeah, you're just saying that because you took it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, how could I not win Yeah, that? well, you were the only one there that had that army. It's true. Yeah. Mike Collins and I have got this, like... You gonna bring it? understanding. You gonna bring it? No, I'm not gonna bring mine. Okay, okay. I'll bring mine. <laughs> now that mine's fully painted, it's gonna be like, hmm... And what did you get for that? Just raffle tickets? Or? I did. I got did you win anything in the no. raffle? No. no. I was close. My number was called, like, one off twice. Oh, yeah. But no, I didn't. Oh, and they did have an, uh, a prize for the most number of ones and the most number of sixes rolled, but I, yeah. I forgot who no, won. No, I know, I know who, who won. won them. 
Who won? Uh, Brendel won for sixes, mm -hmm. because he rolled like a ridiculous amount of them in the yeah. last game. And I won. For ones? For ones. Oh, no way. <laughs> and it was probably something to do with that seven ones in a roll I rode. Yeah. Or, roll I rode. I got you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Tongue tied. Uh, ones I had rolled for the Necromancer in that one combat. Yeah. Yeah, I won a pair of black skull dice. Nice. And I said I'm going to use them to roll. Were they, the, were they metal or? Uh, no, I think they're resin cast. Oh, okay, I think the other ones might have been. I'll have to roll them a couple times and see what kind of numbers I'm getting. Mm. Maybe I'll use them as my resurrection <laughs> rolls <laughs> if they roll good. And then uh, Top three. Third, third place overall, thanks to me. Could have been one of us. Could have been one of us. Steve Stokes, who beat me in the last game. Yeah. He came in third. So good for him. It was. Yeah. And, uh, and the top second, table was between... Were they playing each other? They yeah, were, they did. Derek, they it, they Derek were both and undefeated. 3 no at that point. Derek uh, Satnick had played Andrew Brock on the top table for, yeah. the, for the tournament. You've and, already told who yeah, won. So. Andrew won. Yeah. Yeah. No surprise there. Hashtag don't let Andrew yeah. win. Failed again. Yeah. Okay, so our next event coming up in June. Three, nope, yeah, three weeks away. June 23rd. It's at a place I've never been to or heard of before. It's a hobby shop, Forbes Hobbies in Cambridge, Ontario. Mm -hmm. Have you been there? Before? No, there's a lot of hobby stores in that area that is, I've never yeah. even heard of. Yeah. Well, because you have, what is it, uh, Cambridge, Guelph, and Kitchener are kind of like a triangle, mm -hmm. and even like beyond that, you've got, you know, Hamilton. And... Mm -hmm. There's lots of areas. It's yeah. the, that area is very game store heavy. Yeah, it's, I wish it was more like that in our area. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like a, a null dead zone of gaming stores up it's here. like a desert wasteland of no gaming stores. Yeah. Uh, only 10 bucks also, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's cheap. Yeah, yeah, you're not going to be able to make it though, eh? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. It depends. It depends yeah. how busy. I'm, I'm, I might be going away that week, so yeah. I don't, uh, if I have to work, I have to work. I don't know. It's up in the air. It's up in the air. Um, weird point value for this one. Yeah. 369 it's... points. Yeah, it's like some random. <laughs> it's like. Pew, 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 pew. Yeah. What did I shoot? Pew, pew. 369. Yeah. Yeah, so fair enough. Uh, and five rounds. And then the... the, the There's got to be a reason for that number. It is, yeah. Uh, I think what it is is that Evan's playing an army. All right, Evan's going to play in it. And mm -hmm. he picked an army. And that's what the army does. <laughs> it's con convenient. This is good a good way of any to yeah. pick a... I've number. actually... I've written a couple lists. I've written... Seven lists. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Seven? Yeah. Because honestly, that point value... I know. You're like all all about low points. Yeah. That's that's right in my... What do you call that? Your, your, your uh, sweet... The my strike sweet zone. Spot, strike my strike zone. zone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, that's, what, that's the point value uh, that I like in the game because... It pretty much has to be a skirmish game at that level. Yeah. You can't get too crazy at that level. Yeah. He has a bit of, uh, um, I guess his only comp restriction is that you have to take a captain type profile. Yeah. So if it's something that has like two might, one will, one fate. Yeah, because he said it, it doesn't stats. actually have to have the word captain in it. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> uh, so you have to have a captain leading 12 warriors yeah and they have to be like the same profile yeah so for example you take like an you could take an urukai captain and then 12 urukai warriors and give them different gear but they would all be 12 urukai for that matter out of isengard you could take an urukai captain leading 12 orcs they don't necessarily have to be the same yeah they just have to be the same yeah. profile like section the warriors yeah yeah, so it's not that restrictive, but... Uh, and then the other stuff, you take whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah. In, yeah. And as many factions as you want. It's like, so what can I take that's a captain yeah. and the cheapest 12 guys? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll take uh, the uh, the new uh, Goblin Mercenaries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they could make an appearance. 
uh, and it's um, it's actually not necessarily going to be a Swiss style. It's going to be more of an elimination style. It doesn't get into the details of exactly what that means. So normally elimination is you lose a game, you're out. Yeah. But obviously everybody's going to play five games. So yeah. I think you lose a game, you can no longer win, I think, is oh, win okay. the turn, probably. Roll. Something like that. Cutthroat. It's cutthroat. And the missions, he's going to roll them up. Like an idiot, I post on his thing, what are the missions? And then, and then, then someone, read the <laughs> someone says, look at the thing. And I look at, I look at his like poster that he made up and like right in the middle of it is like, missions will be rolled up on the day. He's like, <laughs> it's, like oh, it's funny how that happens when you're over 50. It happens kind of a lot. Actually. Yeah, what else? Blame it on that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, so yeah that, that one, um, interesting. I, I'm also hoping to be able to go, but it's like, I have a big event the weekend before, so yeah. I could be pushing my luck if it's, I go to that. It's the summer. Well. It's, yeah. Oh yeah, we have, uh, we yeah. have our thing the weekend before. Yeah. Okay, well, holes are for hobbits. Anyway, that's the next one on the 23rd of June. We might be there. We might be there. I think probably one of us will be there. I'm going to try to go. Did Drew say he was going? He cannot go. He has a family function. Then we should definitely both go. Yeah, I want to go <laughs> because he's not going. Yes, exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. So it's like all the more chance to try we, to win. We have this like rivalry between us two and him. Yeah. we got to keep him down where we are. Yeah. Can't let them get up too well, high. Like, I'm still trying to win. You're actually first I'm in still, the league. Oh yeah, yeah. Did you see <laughs> yeah, that? I saw that. Yeah, our, our league standings came out I'm today. seventh. Check it out, eh? <laughs> it's like the ice. I was joking online talking to the guys. Yeah, it's the only time in the season where I can actually be in first because the reason I'm in first is because I have three scores that are contributing to my total score, yeah. and like the people that are right behind me only have two. Yeah. So like I'm like twenty points ahead of them, but I have been to three tournaments and they have had two. Like Drew has two scores. He's in second place. Well, he got he won one tournament, so he got a hundred points, and the other one's like ninety five or something like that. So it's like, <laughs> yeah, he'll get one more score and yeah. go racing past me unless I win. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta take the cheese. No, I take the cheese. No. As we've discussed. <laughs> I'm not into the cheese as much. Which is why I don't win, I guess. So the next thing we're talking about yeah. is a scenario spotlight. Yeah. We're gonna talk about scenarios. Yeah, and this is way too big to talk about in one show because we're already going pretty long here. So um what we're gonna do is We've just of, we're gonna yeah we're gonna just talk about a, a part of it here. Okay. But go ahead and say what you're gonna. Well, say. like we we've grouped the twelve missions mm -hmm. into smaller groups. Yeah. So these are now the twelve standard missions that come in the general generals pack. So these ones. Yeah. So we had six before, and now we have twelve. Which so, is good. So obviously we have six new ones. Well, actually no, we have seven new ones because they got rid of one. Mm -hmm. They got rid of high ground. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't like high ground. Just got rid of it. Yeah. Probably because it's no very, more taking the hill. It's very similar to hold ground, so yeah. it's like eh, <laughs> you're on the hill or you're within six inches yeah. of this spot. And it's like yeah, not every table happens to have a hill on it, so it's like yeah, let's get rid of that one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, but it's it's better though the way they have the missions now. Um, you know, you've seen this coming for the last year or so where now all of the missions are based around 12 victory points. Yes. Which is it's really like a good. It's standard system. Yeah, it, it, helps, it helps hugely for competitive play. Because mm -hmm. the way it was before with like Reconnoiter or Lords of Battle, you get like these ridiculous number of victory well, points. Yeah, even um, I think the way Nova is scoring is you have win, loss, draw. Mm -hmm. But you have a minor win and a major win. Yeah. Uh, and a minor loss and a major loss, and it's based on the number of victory points difference, yeah. which is good because yeah. it not only does that separate the field more and break mm -hmm. it down easier to pair people off against, yeah. but at the end, the winner's going to be the person with five major wins. Yeah, and like we've seen this for years in other game systems, yeah. right? We, we, we have like crushing victory and, you know, massacre or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. It's, it's like you have, instead of just win, loss, draw, 
you have like two levels of winning and two levels of losing yeah. basically right and the advantage of it is big and it is basically ensures you have way fewer ties at the top mm -hmm. of the tournament at the end of the day well the, in a four game tournament you're going to yeah. have more like than in our league we frequently get ties and then it's decided by strength of schedule or whatever mm -hmm. the TO is doing um, so that that helps a lot for resolving that kind of thing um, like critics of that would say that the downside of it is then people push to massacre their opponent because you want like the crushing victory yeah so you know it's no longer good enough just to beat the guy by a couple of points you gotta like hammer the guy now to make sure you get the crushing like, victory yeah, yeah that one banner you have in the back you're not getting those two so <laughs> so there there is that about yeah. it as well yeah no but uh but I going, do like I do like the fact that they're all standard now and twelve yeah, points. So yeah, um, but going through the missions, um, we kind of group them really more to just talk about them because obviously we can't talk about twelve scenarios in one segment. It's just way too much content. Mm -hmm. So we broke them down based on either the mission itself or the those missions were very similar, or maybe the type of army that you would bring. Or would do well in that type of mission was was common. Okay. Um, so the first ones we we grouped together uh, are ones where like mobility would be really important part yeah. of the you you would need mobility in like your army a, to a do fast well. Fast moving army. Yeah. So um, we got like scenario five reconnoiter. Speed is really important. Yeah, there. you got to get across the table. Scenario seven seize the prize. It's all about who gets to the middle first, and then still you got to run across the table yeah. with the prize. And heirlooms of ages passed, right? Another um, one where yeah. if the objective is found on the opposite side. Yeah. So we won't go in, in, yeah, into yeah. any of those. That's one group. We'll come back to that at okay. another time and talk about it. And why don't you grab the next one? So that's going to be based uh, scenarios based on controlling key positions on the battlefield. Uh, the first scenario for that is domination. Um, so that's the five objective one. Mm -hmm. uh, hold ground being the, the hold the middle and then capture and control along with storm the camp. Yeah, so capture and control is actually a pretty neat mission. It's very much like domination. The only thing is that you don't have to stay on the objective. This one is just at the end of the turn who has control of it. Yeah, so it, the, the, the control, well, the, the bases flip back and forth. Yeah. So you can't just like, haha, I've got it and then run yeah. away. And storm the camp, it's also about who controls the camp on the opposite diagonal of the yeah. board. Um, so that one actually is about controlling a spot on the board, but mobility is actually important for that one too. Mm -hmm. But because the objective is actually about controlling a point And you, board, you have to be careful that people with mobility don't sneak around your really yeah. slow dwarves. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, what's the next one? Uh, scenarios based on breaking, breaking the opponent's army. So these are like the really fighty scenarios, I guess, yeah. really. Scenario 2, to the death. Scenario 6, ill met by moonlight. And scenario 11, fog of war. So these are all missions that have pretty standard victory or objectives. Mm -hmm. Mostly breaking, leader kill, that kind of stuff. So Killing that random guy. I yeah. guess fog of war is the one where you nominate a guy. Yeah, you nominate a hero. Yep. And then the last group is going to be uh, based on tally, yeah. or tallying up kills. So either with your entire army being uh, Lords of Battle, mm -hmm. uh, which is scenario four, or scenario eight, which is Contest of Champions, and that's all about how uh, how good your hero is. Yeah, so it's the, for Lords of Battle is tallying wounds and fate included. Okay. And the other one is actually kills, but that your champion gets. It's your leader, kills, it's not leader. wounds they cause. Correct. Yeah. And those so, are the two that we're Yeah, so we're talking about those because there's only two of them and we've been rattling on for a long time. Yeah. Um, so those ones, you look at them right away and everything about them is very similar. Deployment, it's very similar. Um, it's, you know, half the board, so your deployment zone is 24 inches. Yep. Um, <clears throat> in Lords of Battle, you just alternate and deploy your warbands anywhere within your half. Whereas in Contest of Champions, 
you have to set up your leader and his warband, or the leader has to be within three inches of the center and the warband has to be within six inches of him. Um, but other than that, you go back to the old way of rolling one to three, 12 inches of the center, or four, five, or six, anywhere you want. Yeah. Um, so similar type of deployment, i.e. probably fighting on the first turn. Yeah, it's going to be, you could set up basically. Yeah, unless you take an all archery army or something. Yeah. Um, the way that they end is a little different though too. Yeah. Um, Lords of Battle is when one force is broken, uh, at the end of the that game turn, on a one or two the game ends, mm -hmm. uh, in Contest of Champions, that's 25%. So yeah. it's, a, it's a little different. Like yeah. the, the, the turn after broken um, will go, like you, if you break on turn five or whatever, mm -hmm. you're going to play the sixth turn and maybe the game will end then. But with Contest of Champions, if you get somebody down to 25% on that fifth turn, the game mm -hmm. just ends then. There's yeah. no there's no roll or go to the next turn, so you kind of have to play it out. And if it's advantageous for a guy to not use his fate and just die to end the yeah. scenario, yeah, which has happened before. So we we already talked about like the the main tally that you have to keep track of. Mm -hmm. uh, in one case, it's just wounds caused by your whole army, and the other case, it's kills caused by your leader. But in both of them, it's worth either three, five, or seven victory points. Yeah. And it's based on having done more, having done twice as many, or having done three, three times. times as many. Yeah. Um, so that those are you know, the lion's share of potential victory points anyway. The uh, leader kill for contests, it has to be immediately though. Yeah. You can't use spells or hurls or, or shooting. Nothing, yeah. Where in Lords of Battle, any wound caused. Yeah. So, exactly. Um, they both, then they both have actually the same other secondary objectives, which are leader wound and kill and, and breaking the enemy, mm -hmm. but they're not worth the same. They kind of flip. Yeah. The second version, or like the the major yeah. part of. The yeah, two. one of them puts emphasis on leader kill, and the other one puts emphasis on breaking the army. So, yeah. like Lords of Battle. Because that one is not about leaders, the emphasis on breaking the other army. So it's worth one if you break the other guy, and three if you're unbroken yourself. Uh, whereas in Contest of Champions, that's only worth one and two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They both have uh, kind of the same special rule about getting might back. Yeah, well, first of all, they both have a special rule. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's actually rule. not common. Uh, Lords of Battle has. A time of heroes, and that's each time your force kills an enemy hero in a fight, one of the heroes in that same fight regains a point of might lost during the battle. Mm -hmm. So heroes that don't have might at all can't just be given a might point, which right. sometimes people confuse that. Mm -hmm. Or if they've already got their full three might, they try and give them an extra one. Yeah, no, no. no. Yeah. You have to have spent it to get it yeah. back. So if you know you're going to kill their hero, like have your hero spend might to, to push that over. Right. Like if you you're like, oh, I don't know if I should use this might to get that extra wound, in case he fails his fate. No, nope, spend it. Yeah. Because <laughs> you're, you're gonna not, get it back. Yeah, you're gonna get it back. And then uh, contest of champions also has a special rule very similar. The last stand, where uh, you gain back a might point again, one that's been previously spent. Yeah. When you kill a hero or multi wound model. Oh, so it's a little different. Yeah, you're, but your le it's your leader. Yeah. Gets it. So he could... Actually, I think it's your leader. I didn't actually write that down. Each time, either leader, yeah. Okay. But you, so could, kill, you could kill big things. Mm -hmm. Maybe kill a troll or... Yeah. So the I think the differences between these missions is obviously in one, you really need a fighty hero. And the other one, yeah. you don't. Don't have Galadriel. Yeah, uh, leading your army. Yeah, in Goddess of <laughs> Champions. Yeah, whereas in Lords of Battle, you know, Galadriel would be fine. She'd be okay, yeah. Yeah. Well, because in that one... It's all about your fighting. army. Yeah, yeah it's, it's just it's about your army. Um, you know, you could take an all-archery army or a heavy archery army and do really well still in Lords of Battle. Yeah. Right? Maybe not so well in contests. 
No, but yeah, then you'd probably get smoked in contest, yeah. So I really like, so of course Lords of Battle is one of the old tried and true yeah, missions. And it's really been improved by the 357 yes. VPs. Um, so not a lot to say about that one. We all, we've played it a hundred times. Uh, Contest of Champions, though, I really like that this has been added because, I mean, we've seen so many different custom versions of Contest of Champions at various tournaments, and some of them work and some of them don't work. Um, so it's really good to just see them come out with, like, a standard mission for it. Yeah. Know? Yeah. And it actually is another, like, one of the things, too, is that um, you see people <clears throat> in tournaments, they shy away from the big fighty heroes. Just because they're so easy to lock down and kill. They're afraid of being. Oh yeah, transfix, right? It's transfix, yeah. Yeah. You get ma you get magicked into the ground and killed. So, people have stayed away from them. So it's good to see another mission come into the the fold where, you know, those guys are like intended to do well, like Azog, like you said before, like that's his mission. Yeah. Right. Or Bolg even, you know, like. Yeah, Bolg's. Like, you know, he his special rule is well. Actually, his special rule is more for killing warriors than well. I think it's kill anything, but yeah. But in Contest of Champions, yeah. your guy wants to yeah. be killing yeah. models. You're getting right? you're getting double the, double double whammy on on it. it. It also adds into that you can't well. It makes it harder to design an army, yeah. uh, knowing that that mission could be chosen. And this is where. Um, when we go to tournaments, I'd prefer to almost see more tournaments not post what missions are being used. Yeah, it would be good, or at least not post all of them. Yeah, so, but yeah, no, I, I prefer having something like that mm -hmm. as, a, as a possibility, because we haven't seen that mission. We've no. seen, not uh, yet. like, adjusted ones mm -hmm. for tournaments, but I, I think the other thing is not everybody has access to all of these, so... Yeah. They're not, they're not mainstream yet because they were sold in a separate mm -hmm. release, so not everyone bought it. Like I'd but. prefer that once everybody has access to it, that we start using... As I'd rather have access or a pool of 12 different ones to choose from mm -hmm. than just the standard 6 or custom ones made up. Yeah. Like we've got these 12 that Games Workshop has spent time and, yeah. and play tested and, and that, so we want to... I'd prefer to use those as opposed to... Okay. I think that's good enough rundown for those ones. Oh, yeah. Yep. And now we've got the, the main attraction. Flotsam and Jetsam. I was actually playing a game the other day, and I came across this location, and it was actually Flotsam. Oh, yeah? And I was like, wow, I actually know what this word is. <laughs> and it was I've actually, seen it before. It was like a shipwrecked part of the, the map, and yeah. there's all kinds of derelict ships and that everywhere. Well, that's actually supposed to be what flotsam is. Yeah. Flotsam is the stuff that floats to the surface from uh, mm -hmm. like a sunken ship, and so it's just like floating around in the water. Just a little yeah, little thing I found outside of... Yeah. Do you know what jetsam is? No. Jetsam is the stuff that you throw overboard because you don't want it anymore. <laughs> oh, so like, okay. Yeah, get rid of it. It's like we gotta go yeah. faster. We need to so, lose some so, weight. So so okay. Here we go with this. So we got. Oh. This is a top ten. This is gonna. We're gonna try a top we got ten. Envelopes. Yeah. And we stuff we here got too. we got. This is official. These is like. This is a lot of research and stuff has gone into this. <laughs> this is very highly official. Okay. Um. So this is the top ten reasons to attend an OSBGL event, and we're gonna do a countdown. Well, we have. Yeah. Two. Honorable mentions. First. We do. Just this is just to sort of give an idea of what kind of what it's what it's, like it's all about. Just a little taste of the water. Yeah. These these like were ones that that didn't make the final. They're close. Yeah. They're close, close to the cut. We we couldn't do top twelve, so we had yeah. to get rid of two. Yeah. Okay. You go ahead first. Can I do my first. No. Yeah. And I'm gonna I'm gonna put up photos as I have available okay. to for these here. So honorable mention. See some fantastically painted models and incredible terrain. There you it's go. It's a good idea. Yeah, yeah, you come to a tournament with like 30 people there or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to see. Like, how many times do you go to a tournament and you see armies yeah. and you're like, man, if I could paint my guys like that? I know, it's crazy. It's like, and I know for this one I have the picture of uh, Elias Smog from the last one. Yeah. And I think I have a picture of uh, Adam Marcel's... Um, 
lake town that yeah. you put all that work into. It's really nice. And then, yeah. like, the terrain, it's just, yeah. like, going to these events, seeing stuff like that makes yeah. me want to paint more and, yeah, yeah. and actually come But that's and, not even one of the top tens. I know. That's, just that's like, crazy. That didn't make like, the cut. I know. Yeah. What do you got? Well, here's mine. Okay. Come hang out with some old bald guys. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I have a hat on. <laughs> yeah, it's like old bald guys. <laughs> so it's, yeah, so I got like I have a picture of me and Tom. Okay. At at uh, have one. <laughs> yeah, so. This is good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And then we have so the... now this is the official though. Okay. These are like you know right from envelopes, these yeah. are like sealed envelopes right from the accounting firm. So number ten, we'll start off. Okay, what, Johnny. What what could it be? <laughs> this is like super official. Number ten, get. Photo bombed by Chris O'Reilly. <laughs> <laughs> like, how many times has this guy been like, know, like making silly faces <laughs> at yeah. random times? Uh, so I got one here for for that, but it's like almost every tournament you don't notice it like during the day, but like only when you know someone puts up the post and there's like twenty <laughs> photos attached and going and there's Chris in one of them, <laughs> like <laughs> making his face or whatever. It's like he always finds a way to get in there. That's a good one. That's definitely <laughs> worthy of the top ten. Yeah. Okay. Okay, number nine. Okay, number nine. Take a break from the computer games and roll some dice. Lots of different kinds of dice. There you go. Right on. So get get some tactile hand-eye coordination into your game. It's a dwindling thing, you know. It like, is, yeah. The computer games have become so popular and, yeah. and that that not a lot of people are doing this. We still see people out playing games, but... It's that competition we have. Yeah. You just got to get out and... Well, you know, you've been coming to, like, the games club that I run. And it's like, you've been coming to it since you were a kid, right? Yeah. Since, the, like, after yeah. you had this t-shirt. This t-shirt's yeah. been around longer yeah, oh, than yeah. I've been this playing is, games. I, I found this in... I was cleaning <laughs> out my t-shirt drawer today, right? And I have some old t-shirts in there. Yeah. And yeah, like, that's an old t-shirt. I, I don't wear this one because I don't like wearing t-shirts with the big patch thing on the back. Yeah. Uh, but this one I put on because it's 20 years old. This is 1998 Grand Tournament, Canadian Grand Tournament. And it would have been around yeah. this time of year. Yeah, back when GW actually cared about Canada, way back in time. Yeah. GW. Yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Get out and play games. Yeah. Oh, well, what I was going to say was because like the, the games club that I've been running it for over 25 years with yep. Chris and that. Um, when computer games became mainstream, we, we lost like half of our people. Oh, I know. I remember like going least, to the games club yeah. and they're just being like, you yeah. could get a game of 40K or a game yeah. of. Yeah, and you know what? Whatever. I play computer games too, but like, you know, put the computer game aside. Yeah. Come like come out to an event, roll some dice with some people. Just once a month. Yeah, make some actual friends face to face mm -hmm. and, and have fun. So that's that's not. I've actually met a lot of people yeah. in this league through that, like, yeah. that I probably never would have met if it wasn't mm -hmm. for this. Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Number eight. What's this one going to be? Number eight. Get utterly destroyed by one of these guys. <laughs> Is that us? No. Not us, no. We do okay, though. We do okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. I guess... But the, 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 this is going to be Drew and Ben, <laughs> right? Yeah. The two guys that are always at the top of the yep. tournaments, and, like, so far, they're the winners of our three completed seasons that we've it's had. true. Drew was champion of two, uh, 2015 and 16, and Ben won 2000. And I think, like, the other guy was, like, second probably all three years. I don't think I've actually lost a game in a tournament to Andrew. I think we've either tied or I've beaten him. So I think that's why he does so well at these events. Because you don't play him? It's because he avoids me. That's possible. I think that's, that's the real reason. I don't do good at it. <laughs> I yeah. like saying that I don't to make do myself well. feel better. I don't do well against Drew at tournaments. I'm pretty sure I've beat him at tournaments. I know I've drawn him at tournaments. I've never beaten Ben at a tournament, though. Every time I've played him, I've lost. Come to think of it, yeah, I can't, uh, I might have tied him once, but yeah, that would yeah. be, that would be it. But for all, uh, all of that,
both really nice guys. Yeah, so, definitely. Like know, if I get to lose yeah. to somebody every time I play yeah. them, I want it to be one of those two guys. Yeah, it's not like you're losing to uh, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's move on. Number seven. Number seven. I like how official this is. I know. Win awesome prizes. It's true. And there, there are awesome prizes. We can win like some serious stuff. Yeah. We have wooden spoons that you can win. I, you know, I took, <laughs> I took the army I took to Dudley's Heroes with the intent purpose of winning the one ring. Oh, yeah? Because I had the Necromancer. And oh, yeah, yeah. School, Olga would have gone right along with your uh, theme. My entire army was designed to get that item. Someone ruined your theme. And then I had to tie you the first game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I think it was the loss in the last game that kind of sealed the well, deal. Well, definitely. Yeah. But, but we've had lots of good prizes over the years. I yeah. mean, um, even now still, we're still giving away, like, model kits and stuff, but, like, quite common, we give out, like, plaques, and, um, like, we've seen, you know, like, acrylic awards with embossed copy, um, like, one Derek year I, I gave, I gave away the stuff? Gimli helmet one, one time, yeah, like, Derek always is, like, big on the raffle and doing yep. stuff like that. But More than just, like, models yeah. and stuff like that, yeah. We've we've sort of started to shy away from the big dollar value prizes and trying to spread it out more so that, you know, more people that attend the tournaments come away with something. Yeah. It, that helps. Yeah. Like, I, I'd be more inclined to go to an event where... I have the chance of winning something even if I don't win all my yeah. games. And and what we found out like in our in our first year and second year where we were actually doing a lot of research was that people actually don't attend the tournaments to win a prize. No. Right? Um, that's not the primary reason why they go. Um, and one of the common um, suggestions that we had was to try to open up the prizing so that more people had access to it. Yep. And it wasn't just always like the winner and second and third that were getting the prizes. Because then the prizing is attached to the competitive side of the event. Right. Yeah. And really it's not intended to be that way because that's what the league is for is to track the tournament. Yeah. Wins. Like the so. league should be the, the competitive side. Okay. Okay. Number six. Number six. I guess number six is written on here. Number six. Get some fantastic war stories you can tell over and over. <laughs> <laughs> well, because they happen at every tournament. Every tournament you have a game or two where some ridiculous thing happens. Like the, like even the one that we, we were just at in this all hero one. Um, you trying to kill Rumil. Don't even get me started. I spent the like, whole game. Yeah. And it's like, Rumil is like at one point down a wound, I yeah, think. No fate. No fate. And he's surrounded by three of the Nazgul. Yeah. Right? And loses the fight. Yeah. Seven, I think it was seven dice or something. No. Yeah. It was six. Did he actually have a wound off him then? Because yeah, he, had one, he... he had one wound left. Okay. I had three guys on you. Yeah. Six attacks. Multiply by two because you're trapped. Yeah. Twelve dice. Yeah. And didn't roll a single wound. <laughs> and I didn't and then, have I didn't have any might to boost it. Yeah. Like I was I was absolutely blown away that yeah. I didn't have it. Yeah. And then the next turn, I threw I think like five or six dice and a chill soul against you. Yeah. And you had one will <laughs> and two might left, and I rolled a six, and I'm like, okay, as long as he doesn't roll a four plus, I've got this. You roll the four, and yeah. you spend both your money. <laughs> and then after that, I was able to bring in a couple other bodies yeah. to, to help but out. But he, he still didn't die. Yeah. He lived Yeah. with one wound. I know. Crazy, eh? That was incredible. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that or yeah. my, but these seven, kind of, these my <laughs> seven ones in a roll will never be <laughs> let down. Yeah. But these are the kind of war stories that you can... Uh, you come away from all the tournaments with this kind of stuff. Yeah, or if like, like in a game you can play against Smog and you actually kill him, like yeah. you'll never forget that. No, yeah. I don't you think know, anyone's You know what I never him. forget is when I played you uh, last year at one of the events, and it, and it finally dawned on me how ridiculously good Shelob is. Oh yes. 
You remember what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> like, charge a troll. Isengard troll. Yeah. Knock you down. Yeah. Because I won the combat. Yeah. Kill ya. One go. <laughs> yeah. It was like, f full health Isengard troll. Charged by Sheila. Dead. Yeah. It's like... Oh my god, that thing is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's because it's cause the troll has six strength. Yeah. And our monster's cavalry. Yeah. So anyway, war stories. Yeah. Number six. Yeah, get out and make some. That's right. It's guaranteed to happen. Yep. You'll have something happen in one of your games. Okay, number five. Now, okay, this is now where we're getting into the serious meat and potatoes here, not like these other fluffy no, number yeah. 6 to 10. These are, these are, these are the serious <laughs> business here. Number 5. Meet Gandalf. Yeah. <laughs> you can meet Gandalf if you come to our events. Yeah, we have Gandalf. Yeah, here's a picture of him right here. Yep. Yep. Has he been to one event or? I think he's been to two so far. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that's that, that's that's Derek, and both uh, he's been to two events, and both of them we had uh, an award for best costume. Yeah, and he has a Gandalf costume that he busts out for, for that <laughs> stuff. Uh, and uh, yeah, so it's pretty funny when he's 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 shown up to that. It's good that people yeah. come out and dress up. Yeah, like that that's definitely something to add to the list of things to come out and see. What are you number four here? Number four. Get motivated to paint your models. There you go. And let me tell you, when I go to an event and I see stuff that's painted by other people, yeah, it makes me want to paint my stuff. It does, yeah. And for me, like, cause like I go crazy making army lists, cause I have a lot of models. Um, I have a lot of armies, but many of them are incomplete. So mm -hmm. when I'll like go through my lists that I want to bring. You know, I'll always end up with a few models that need to be painted. And so I would say that probably over half of the miniature painting that I do is because I'm needing certain models for a list that I'm bringing to a tournament. Yeah. Right? So it is it is a really good motivator to, like, you know, you're going to a tournament, and let's say, like, you don't have a painted army, right? And it's only half painted. But you want to go to a tournament and you want it to be painted. Well, there you go. That's the, it's that's huge the reason. It is. That's it is. why I got my school stuff done. It's yeah, good. and, and I you know what? Stayed up like, late for a whole week. Yeah. That's my own fault. Procrastination. Wow. Yeah. But everybody does that. Yeah, you could be home painting models right now. Yeah, there's no way. <laughs> <laughs> if I was home, you'd be like sleep right now. <laughs> okay, so number three. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Number three. What do we got? Learn how to play the game. That's a pretty good reason. <laughs> it is a good reason, yeah. Because, I mean, how you go to a tournament and you play, you know, normally it's four games, right? In, yep. In a day. that That's more games than you're likely to play in a whole month. Assuming True. Assuming you actually have a, a buddy that plays. Yeah, like we, you know? we play maybe yeah. three times a month, I would say. Probably, yeah. But then we have a tournament that we go to, so... Yeah. Like, honestly, most of the games that, that we play now are the games at the tournaments. Well, yeah, I play more really? in the tournament than I do throughout the month. Yeah, yeah. Like, we may play, like, a couple of games during the month and then go to a tournament and play four games. Yeah. But, I mean, if, you don't, if you're not sure on the rules, what better way? Just jump into the deep end, come to a tournament. There's tons of people there uh, that have absolutely no issue... With, yeah. with teaching new people how to play. Um, the reality is that you're probably going to be playing on the bottom tables because you're probably going to be losing your games. But if you're coming there to uh, just have fun and learn how to play the game, that's what you're going to do. You're going to be spending your time playing on the bottom tables, playing against people that have absolutely no problem with explaining the rules of the game yeah. to you. Like when you. When you start a new game, you're not going to be... A master of it right away. No, uh, especially if you don't know the rules 100. percent But you can't. You have to have a starting point. Yep. So just come out and play. Yeah, and like you, you know, you go to one tournament, you go to two tournaments. All of a sudden, you've got you know eight or ten games under your belt, and you're pretty comfortable now. 
Yeah, like yeah. there's a there's a bunch of it people. It doesn't take long. It doesn't just just started like last season and yeah. look at them now. They're yep. they're in the top of a lot of tournaments. Yep. Just gotta get out and play. Like there's no better way of learning the game than playing it, right? Yeah, well we've done it with other game systems too. It's like you know, like for me too, it's like I, I just can't read through a rule book cover to cover no. anymore. It's like I'd rather just go there and mm -hmm. just jump in do how it. do i play this game yeah <laughs> yeah. yeah let yeah. me show you <laughs> exactly so yeah get out and play games all right we're in the top two we are this is a pretty good one mm -hmm. it's a good follow-up actually use your lord of the rings models right on so get out and play with your lord of the rings models yeah i mean you know tons of models lying around like for me I've got like tons of models but yeah you got to use them you, you, you use them by playing with them exactly you know we well, if you're gonna spend all that time painting them too like yeah I know some people like to paint for just painting but yeah if you're into miniature gaming and you're painting these models yeah like it, some people them. do buy them just to paint them and display them but you know probably 95 percent of people buy their models to actually play the game yeah um, so whether they're painted, not painted, just use your models. Yeah. I mean, like that, that's the reason why I got back into this game actually was because I actually, uh, Adam Marcel from Blackfire Productions, who is a good friend of ours, yeah. he actually asked me for a game back in 2014 and he's like, do you have an army and do you want to have a game? And I'm, well, yeah, I actually do have an army. It's painted and it's been sitting in the army case for like six <laughs> years. So yeah, let, I want to use the models. Let's get out and let's, play. Let's have a game. And, you know, I fell in love with the game and, you know, it's, uh, it was, you know, a roller coaster after that. And we were talking about it earlier that yeah. that was probably what started us. Well, for me with, it was. With yeah. back into the... Like we had played it before as yeah. a game stay thing, but we never really yeah. played it as a mainstay. So. Yeah, well, we ran a demo for Lord of the Rings in probably 2001 or 2002 at Canada Games Day. Yeah, we it was around there. the Two Towers era. Yeah, and uh, so we still had some stuff kicking around, and I ended up collecting an army and painting it, mm -hmm. and I never used it. It just sat in my case. Um, but once I played that game, because I wanted to use my models, it's like, you know, fell in love with the game and started watching GVHL and... and it was actually we, a game system that was yeah. not giant robots. <laughs> yeah, well, like, I like the skirmish, I like skirmish yeah. games, that's all I'm into. Yeah. And, uh, this one is a fantastic game for it that, is. but, you know, ultimately, you, you've got tons of models lying around, or even just a few, well, you bought them to use them, so... Yep. <laughs> Build them, paint them. Come to a out. tournament and you'll play four games in one day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or even just come out and play at like the uh, hobby events we have. Yeah. Or a yeah. game against, like if you're not 100% familiar with the rules, um, like get your models ready, come out, arrange a meetup with somebody. Like there's tons of people that will, mm -hmm. that will meet up to have a, a learning game or we could arrange like a, a meetup. Like there's people yeah. that arrange meetups all the time. Well, that's so. where really the strength of like Facebook is, right? Mm -hmm. You can you can come on the group and, and arrange to meet with other players. Okay, here it is. The number final, number one. It's the final countdown. Yeah. The number one reason number to one come reason. to an OSBGL and I hold in my hand the last envelope. The suspense is killing me. But I already know what it is. <laughs> what is it? Make new friends, yeah. become part of the community, and have a blast. And that's what it's all about, really. What, what better reason? It's a great reason, and it's true. It's true, because the events are always fun. Uh, and that goes for any event. I mean, you see coverage of all kinds of events from you know other communities, other countries. And, and everybody is, it's the one common thing, it's like everybody has so much fun at the events. The events are fun, the like the, the meetings afterwards, the restaurants and all that, it, it's all fun. And you know, the number of people that we've met and made friends with, it's in, it's incredible. It's a large, large number of people. Yeah, yeah. It's, and like we've met a lot of people that we're now friends with because of the game, right? So. 
that's really the main reason why you want to come to the events is is for the social aspect yeah like the facebook group is great the youtube channel is great but i mean that's but not what the community is about don't be a facebook stalker and <laughs> come out and actually meet us like, yeah when we're playing a game um, we're there to answer questions, probably not maybe while we're playing the game, if we look like we're mm -hmm. into it, but after, between games. Yeah. Or if you... like, okay, sorry, what were you saying? I was saying that, uh, yeah, just come out, come out to the events, talk to people. Like, mm -hmm. you don't even have to come to play. Like, if, if you want to come out and just ask questions at your first event out like well i mean we have a lot of people now that if they're busy that day with a family function or something you know they still come anyways yeah like they'll, even if they'll it's do for 20 minutes they'll do their thing and they don't play but they'll they'll come and stop in and, and visit hi. or whatever or we've had people that actually will sign up and come and play but oh i have a thing i have to go to in the afternoon so they'll come and play like the two games in the morning and then take off and the, that's why that's why all the tournaments have a ringer is for yeah. stuff like that. Like if you come to an event, even if you just come to watch, you're likely to get a game if you want one because there'll be somebody there that's like, "Hey, you want to have a game? Do yeah. You want me to show you how to play?" Sometimes people actually stick around after. Yeah. Yep. If it's not like a store or something. But yeah, you can you, I don't know, just come out and yeah, but it's, you know, it's a social event. That's what it is, mm -hmm. really. It's, it's you know, it's a tournament, yep, but it's it's just a whole bunch of guys getting together. They're all playing Lord of the Rings strategy battle game, Middle Earth strategy battle game now, I guess. Um, you know, all in the same room on the same day, and all having fun. That's what it's all about. Yep, make yep. new friends. Like, we've met people that... Yeah, and now look at us. We travel, like, hours away to go to people's events because they're our friends and we want to support their event. Yeah, we've and, gone from... You know, we want to hang out. And, Ottawa to... Yeah, we go, like... Chatham. <laughs> yeah, and all the way up to, like, way up north of Barry's Bay yep. and Peterborough Kingston, yeah. Kitchener, like Those all over groups. southern Ontario we've gone. Yeah, it's it's crazy, it's good. but it's, it's, that's what it's all about. It's yep. it's the social aspect. Of Definitely, it. getting out to see the people that you uh, enjoy spending time with. Yeah. So um, that's the number one reason to come to an event. Make friends, become part of the community. Like you're part of the community on Facebook, sure. It's different in person. Yeah, you gotta come out. Like, you know what, we don't have the Facebook group so people can come on there and just talk. That's not what the Facebook group is there for. It's no. there to arrange meetups. Yeah. If you can't come to a tournament or you don't want to come or maybe you're intimidated or whatever, make, you know, make a meetup with somebody on the Facebook group and, and just meet them to learn how to play the game mm -hmm. or, or whatever and then take it from there. Yep. There you go. Okay, well I guess that's it. That's their top 10. Done? Top 10. So is there anything else to say for this episode, or is that pretty much it? No, I think we've rambled, we've on, rambled, on, rambled on. on for a long time. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll cut that out and uh, say uh, so long, and get your toy soldiers out, and come and play some games with us yep. at the OSBGL.